giving me Britney. It is giving me, it's giving me, uh, it's giving me Vogue. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Welcome back to those who are returning. My name is Angel. I'm a flight nurse in the Air Force and my channel is all about my life as a military nurse. Specifically as a flight nurse, I come to you guys with military tips and just talk to you about things that I wish I'd known at any point in my career. So, I went skiing for the very first time yesterday. Turn! Yes! Uphill! 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 <laughs> okay! <laughs> don't, don't laugh at me, guys. Honestly, apart from the hysterical scream, I was told that I did a very good job by my friend who was teaching me to ski. I'm actually going to be taking ski lessons in two weeks, so more to come on how that goes. Anyways, the reason why I'm even telling you guys about the skiing adventure is because I actually met a guy while I was there. Not like that. We got to talking and he's a mortgage loan officer in D.C crazy I know so we got to talking and um, just about loans and like conventional versus VA loans and I have been wanting to for a very long time film a video about buying a house and as a matter of fact I'm filming for the very first time in my California home um, and when I asked in my last video what you guys wanted to see I did get a couple comments on people wanting to know you know what the process is for buying a home how did I afford a home in California etc etc so today's video is going to be talking about just that. Buying a house can be super exciting, but it can also be a little bit intimidating because it is a huge financial commitment. I have bought four houses over the past nine years, and although I'm not an expert by any means, I do want to share some lessons learned with you guys. Believe it or not, every single home purchase, I learned something new. So today's video, I'm going to be talking about the VA loan, pros and cons of it, and just tips for first time home buyers and even experienced ones. If you're at all interested in hearing about buying a home, stay tuned. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The very first thing I'm gonna to talk to you guys about are home loans because unless you're Dave Ramsey, you probably don't have cash laying around to put 100% down on the purchase of your home. Because most of my um, audience members are military, I'm gonna first talk about the VA loan. So there are certain eligibility requirements that you have to meet in order to use a VA loan. I advise you guys to go to Veterans United and take a look at it. I'll put the link in the description box. But essentially you should have served 90 consecutive days of active service during wartime or 181 days of active service during peacetime. As far as National Guard and the reserves go, you have to have six years of service or serve 90 days, 30 of them consecutively under Title 32 orders and you can also be the spouse of a service member who died while serving or due to service-related disability. Now that I've spoken about eligibility criteria, let's dig a little bit deeper into this loan. First, let's talk about advantages because everybody wants to know the pros of the loan. So there's no down payment required. The VA loan has competitively, competitively low interest rates. There's no private mortgage insurance as opposed to conventional loans, which I'll get into a little bit later in this video. There's limited closing costs, and you can use your VA loan more than once, which I have actually done. The main disadvantage of the VA loan is the funding fee. So let me talk to you guys a little bit about this funding fee. I personally think that the VA loan can be one of the most expensive loans that you can get. I say that because of the VA funding fee. And the VA funding fee is a mandatory fee that the VA charges on VA backed loans. There are some criteria where you won't have that you where you don't have to pay it, such as if you're disabled or if you're a Purple Heart recipient, but your loan officer can go over those details whenever you're um, starting the process of buying a home. I want to stress you guys, like it is so important to find a loan officer who is experienced using VA loans and working with veterans. So, with the VA funding fee, depending on whether or not it's your first or second time use of a VA loan, there's certain percentages that, um, I'll just put the chart, how about I just put a chart? I think that makes things a lot easier. So there are three criteria that determines how much of a percent that you're going to be 
um, paying as for when you're using your VA loan and the funding fee. If you have no down payment, first time VA loan users, it's gonna be 2.3% of the loan, right? The loan amount that's gonna be the funding fee. If you're using it a second time and you're not putting a down payment or a third time, et cetera, et cetera, subsequent uses, it's going to be 3.6%. If you put 5% down, 1.65, subsequent use, 1.65, 10% or more, 1.4, 1.4. What this chart shows us is that with the VA loan, you don't have to put any money down, but I strongly advise that if you have the funds to put money down using your VA loan, do it. And that way your VA funding fee reduces, right? As you can see um, when I showed you with the chart. When I bought my first house in San Antonio, nobody told me about trying to put money down in order to reduce the VA funding fee. And I don't think it's like that, it's not that big of a deal, like 2.6% on a $150,000 house is really not that much money um, in the grand scheme of things. Right. I'm in the market to buy a house in Virginia and I'm really weighing whether or not I want to use my VA loan. I think the funding fee becomes a not a problem, I don't wanna, I, words, words matter. It doesn't become a problem, but it's just something that you really wanna evaluate um, when you're purchasing a high value home. So the house in Virginia that I'm looking at, or like, I'll just say my budget right now is around 600 to 650,000. And that being said, if I was to use my VA loan and not put any money down, and 2.6% or actually because I've used my VA loan in the past, it's going to be 3.6%. Oh, that's like $23,000 that's just added on top of the loan. So I know that there are people that are in certain situations that want to become homeowners and don't have money saved to put a down payment. By all means, please use your VA loan. And even if you have, I'm not trying to discourage anyone from not using your VA loan. I just want to stress the importance of if you have money saved, putting down a down payment and reducing that funding fee is imperative. Let's talk about entitlements. So if you've never used your VA loan before or you've used your VA loan in the past but you've completely paid off that mortgage, like you've paid it off in full, then there's no loan limit. So if you were approved for a $4 million home, the VA will fund that with 0% down if you're approved for it, right? So there's no loan limit for first time users or those who have paid off previous uses of VA loans. I've used the VA loan twice. The purchase of my home in San Antonio and North Carolina were both VA loan, backed by VA loans, right? Um, so if I wanted to, I'm moving right in a couple of months, if I wanted to use my VA loan for a third time, there I would have a certain limit that I was eligible to use. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit more about that. If you're trying to use your VA loan again, you, you want to look for what the loan limit is in that county that you're trying to buy in. I go on Veterans United to look at county loan limits and the county loan limit for where I wanna buy is like over $700,000. But that doesn't mean, one thing I wanna stress is like, even though it says, oh yes, this is the county loan limit, you still have to get approved by a lender for that amount. That's the first thing. The second thing is, if you've used your VA loan in the past, you might not be able to, even if you were approved for that amount, your entitlements, right? Because you've used your VA loan in the past, your entitlement may not be enough for you to buy, purchase a home with 0% down, even though you've been approved for the county loan limit. That's kind of confusing, but the easy way to explain it is using this formula, and I'm gonna put it put it on the screen right now. <laughs> I figured the best way to explain this formula is to give a real world example. Being the planner that I am, I contacted a loan officer at Veterans United last year to help me understand my entitlements and the max loan amount the VA would fund with zero money down in the event that I buy a house when I move to the East Coast. The formula is the county loan limit divided by four minus your used entitlement times four. That is the amount, that is the max amount that the VA will fund, an amount you still need to be approved for. In the example here, the county loan limit is $1,089,300. You divide that by four, which equals $272,325. Subtract that 
from my used entitlement, which was $113,117. Then you times that by four, and that is how the loan officer got $636,832.00. So that is the max amount that the VA would fund. An important question that will probably come up is how do I know what my used entitlement is? That is where the certificate of eligibility comes into play. As you can see in the email, Kim actually attached a certificate of eligibility. Here is the certificate of eligibility that I was discussing, guys. So I've sanitized it so you guys don't go and steal my identity, but it will have your name, social, reference number, branch of service. It talks a little bit about that funding fee and whether or not you're exempt from it. I'm non-exempt. It will go over prior uses of your VA loan entitlement, as you can see. Um, North Carolina is on there, Texas is on there, talks about the loan amount, the entitlements charged. If you do a refinance, realize that the refinance is what's going to be showing up, like a VA loan refinance, which I did in 2021. So that's what's showing up here on the certificate of el eligibility, not the initial loans um, that I got. The important thing to note as well is this total entitlement charge, and that is what you're going to plug in to the formula. The basic entitlement is saying zero. I don't honestly really understand that. I just know that, that this number um, at the bottom is really what you want to be looking for, so you can plug it into that formula to figure out your max loan amount that you will be entitled to where, you have, where you're able to put zero um, percent down. All right, what else with the VA loan, guys? <laughs> the last thing that I want to talk to you guys about like uh, um, when it comes to the VA loan is just realize that even if you get approved, so like everything, right? You get approved for the VA loan, you know, you're um, in the clear with having to put no money down. But, um, you know, back in 2020 when the market was crazy. It was a huge seller's market. Everybody was fighting to get homes and people were paying like 20 to 30,000 over asking. If you get approved for that, you get, you know, you get the contract and it's time if for the VA loan, they have to do a VA appraisal and say that appraisal comes back under what you, the asking price was or what you um, put down or what is it called? What you, oh, what am I trying to say? offered gosh that's not that hard <laughs> the VA will only fund the appraisal amount that's just something to consider so just be aware if it doesn't come back you might be having to again come to the table with even more money that's it with the VA loan guys let's move on to conventional loans okay conventional loans are a little bit more straightforward with conventional loans you have to put 20% down if you cannot afford to put 20% down, you have to put a minimum of 3% down. I know that there's just a certain percentage that you have to put down depending on the kind of home that you're buying. For the condo, this condo, I had to put a minimum of 50%. Uh, 50%. Lord, 50%? 5% down. <laughs> I had to put a minimum of 5% down for this condo purchase because I did use a conventional loan with this. If you cannot afford to put 20% down, you do have to pay private mortgage insurance, which is anywhere from 0.5 to 1.5% of the loan amount, right? And you, that's like split up um, in a monthly payment, right? That's a, yeah. Pay a monthly payment. You can get out of private mortgage insurance by refinancing, but you have to have built anywhere from 20% to 25% equity in the home. Then you can refinance, and then boom, no more private mortgage insurance. So when I say like, you know, the guy yesterday tried to convince me of like, you know, the, the VA loan is always the way, and oh, you know, it's always cheaper because your interest rate is gonna be lower by like almost 0.5% as opposed to conventional loans. My advice to everybody is like, could, I could have used my VA loan for this condo. It would have been a little bit more difficult, um, you know, because there was just some like, contract issues, things like that, but that's besides the point. But I could have, in theory, used my VA loan for a third time on this condo. I decided against it because of the price of this condo and again, that VA funding fee. I went with the conventional loan, I put 5% down. My interest rate was garbage because, well, I bought it last year when interest rates started to skyrocket 
and it was new construction and there were construction delays and just a plethora of issues. But I decided to go with the conventional loan, put 5% down and pay private mortgage insurance in the hopes that in the next maybe three to five, not even like once interest rates go down, right? Cause I, I'm already building equity, right? I'm already building that 20% equity that I would refinance and get out of the private mortgage insurance. The guy yesterday really tried to convince me that VA loans were always the answer. And my advice to you guys is to really crunch the numbers. Crunch the numbers and crunch them hard. What is, VA loans will typically have lower interest rates. That's just fact. They have lower interest rates. But based on, the, based on your interest rate with the conventional versus the VA, based on the funding fee with the, with the VA loan versus private mortgage insurance, crunch the numbers and see what the best decision is for your home purchase i think the more expensive the loan the you know it's just you have to make sure that you have a competent loan officer who is experienced in veterans um, in home purchases for veterans who's experienced with all loan options so that is i should have honestly led with that is like first and foremost find yourself a well experienced loan officer because they are the experts and they can again side by side say hey this is what your VA loan purchase would look like this is what your conventional purchase would look like and you know in three to five years you, you're you know like they can they can crunch all those numbers for you make them work for that paycheck <laughs> make them work for the commission because you know these loan officers they do get a commission every time that they sell a loan to a home buyer I think that's really it for conventional guys conventional is just super straightforward it's just super straightforward on my first investment property in san antonio not my not my primary home i actually did um bought a um a an investment property it was fifty thousand dollars and yes and with investment properties this is just something to know and since i'm talking about conventional loans i'm going to briefly mention it with investment properties you have to put 20 percent down there's no way around it. You're buying an investment property, it's 20% down. With $50,000, obviously it's not that much money. <laughs> so I bought my investment property, I used my conventional loan, I put the 20% down. So that's just something I wanted to mention. Just realize that if you're doing it for an investment, then in using a conventional loan, there's really no way around getting, uh, get, there's no way to get around paying that 20% down. Okay. So that's conventional loans. Now let's talk about tips. Home buyer tips. Let's do it. Uh, uh, uh. Dur, 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 dur. Doesn't this look like uh, Britney Spears? You're toxic. I'm sipping under. This dress is from <laughs> this dress is from Zara, but it's giving me Britney. It is giving me. It's giving me. Uh, it's giving me Vogue. I'm sorry, guys. Now that we've spoken about loans. Let's talk about how to prepare to buy a home. What do you need to do? What are some tips that I have for you guys? The very first, and in my opinion, <laughs> one of the most important tips is to stop spending and start saving. I repeat, stop, stop spending and start saving. Buying a house is expensive, y'all. Closing costs are insane. Even if you're rolling the closing costs into the loan, there are just a lot of expenses expensive home related costs um home buying costs so my advice is to stop spending start saving second tip is don't make any huge purchases prior to buying a home this goes hand in hand with your credit score the lower your credit score the higher your interest rate and vice versa so you really want to set yourself up um, in a position to get the best interest rate possible and your credit score has a huge impact on that Third tip is know how much house you can afford. The general rule of thumb is that you shouldn't be spending more than 28% of your pre-tax income on home related costs. Also understand your debt to income ratio. That is how much of your income is going towards paying off debt. That should be, should be under 36%. You want to be able to, you don't want to all, you don't want all of your income going towards paying off debt. You want to save room for emergency funds your savings, college funds, et cetera, et cetera. And also you gotta leave some room to turn up. Bottom line is stick to your budget. Understand how much house you can afford. 
Next tip is to get a pre-approval about six months prior to when you estimate you would be closing on a house. Most lenders won't even really take you seriously until you have a pre-approval letter. And again, the pre-approval is saying, hey, this is how much house you can afford, right? Like if you, this is what you should be looking at as far as budget wise on, you know, what you would be approved for in a home purchase. Next tip is to shop lenders prior to locking in a rate. A lot of VA lenders will offer cash incentives to, you know, grab you, <laughs> to, to get you. I'm, I'm kidding. No, but like for real, they will offer cash incentives to um, buyers in order for them to choose them as the lender, right? Every All these mortgage lenders really are like, you know, they're, they're, they will incentivize you choosing them because they know, right, like everybody can offer low interest rates, et cetera, et cetera. So make sure that you shop lenders Go to the one with the, you know, that gives you the best offer, the lowest interest rate, maybe lowest interest rate and cash incentives. So just make sure that you're shopping around and don't lock in a rate until 90 days prior to closing. And honestly, if you can even wait 60 days prior, you might even get a lower interest rate, but it is a gamble. Talk to your mortgage loan officer. They will give you, you know, kind of uh, walk you through 90 versus 60 days locking in an interest rate. Just don't lock it in too early because if for whatever reason there are delays, right, with closing and your rate lock expires, you have to pay money to extend the rate lock or you have to start from scratch and do like another like a 30 day lock and those just, it's just more expensive and the interest rates are usually not as good. I'm speaking from experience with this condo. It was, it's, um, it, it is new construction and they had said, oh, this, you know, it's going to be ready this month and that got pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed frustratingly so so i had originally locked in a rate based on what they told me we would um on the date that i would be closing and lo and behold that rate lock expired and just long story short just be careful ensure that you know before you're locking in your rate that you know what your what, um, your estimated closing date is going to be and um, don't do it any earlier than 90 days prior to that. Next tip is know what you want in a home. Know your non-negotiables, your nice to haves. Is this gonna be an investment property when you move? You know, what's the crime in the area? What's the school district like? Do you want it to be an investment property right off the bat? Um, maybe you would consider a duplex or a single family home with a two car garage. Just know what you want in a home, your nice to haves your non-negotiables, and I can't stress this enough, get a real estate agent that knows the area. Get a real estate agent that is an expert in the area. I'm talking from experience. Once again, I had to fire my real estate agent in North Carolina because she was showing me homes that I, like just, I just, it's like completely op the opposite of what I wanted. And she also wasn't an expert in the area that I wanted to buy. So I got another one and I got the house of my dreams in North Carolina. Next tip, guys, is to conduct a home inspection test every time. I cannot stress this enough. <laughs> every time. I don't care if it's a new construction home. I don't care if it's a full renovation home. I don't care if the house is a year old. Do a home inspection test every time. In the height of the pandemic, when again, it was a seller's market, people were so desperate to buy homes that they were foregoing doing home inspection tests. I think that's the stupidest thing that you can do. I don't care if you want the house so bad and the, and the buyer is like, oh, I'm gonna take the offer, the highest offer and the person that doesn't want a home inspection test, then that's not the house for you. Do a home inspection test and do all the tests. Check the plumbing, if it's a renovation, were all the renovations done up to code? Do they have to pull permits to do the renovations? You know, just make sure that you are checking everything. I'm a huge advocate for checking plumbing, doing hydrostatic test. If I had done a hydrostatic test on that one investment property I was talking about earlier in San Antonio, I would have saved thousands of dollars. Come to find out, I bought the house, didn't do the hydrostatic test, and there was a leak under the slab. I had to pay thousands of dollars to get to dig up you know, dig up the foundation, fix the plumbing underneath the foundation. And if I had just done that test, I wouldn't have purchased that home. So again, I'm trying to come to you guys with personal experiences. 
don't make the same mistakes that I did. Do all the tests, test for termites. <laughs> Inspect the home and make sure that it's up to code. Walk away if you have to, all right? Do all the tests. All right, next tip guys is to understand the closing disclosure. Your lender is gonna send you the closing disclosure prior to closing. Go over it line by line. Understand every single, they, they, they label it A, B, C, D, cost, blah, blah, blah. Maybe I'll insert a, like my last closing disclosure from my last house. Understand every single fee and all the costs. If you need to have your lender on the phone and have them go over it line by line, do that. You just wanna understand where your money is going, what's being rolled into the loan, et cetera, et cetera. And the last tip, guys, is to keep physical copies of all of your closing documents. Have it in a fireproof case and keep all copies. You never know when you're gonna need it. I needed a physical copy of my, um, I don't know what they call it, it's like a HUD statement for me for filing my taxes this last year. So it's just, I mean, filing my taxes just like two weeks ago. <laughs> so just make sure that you're keeping physical copies of all of your closing documents. And that's it guys. I hope that you guys learned something. I hope this video was informative. I'm obviously here for questions that you guys have. I will leave links to websites that I have used um, in the past in the description box. And yeah, that's, that's really it. Thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you for flying with Angel. I will see you guys in my next video.